Hey folks and welcome to another episode of Podcraft. This is the show all about podcasting, as you know, helping you create a more successful podcast. I'm Colin Gray and joined as always by Matthew McLean. How are you doing Matthew? Good morning to you. Beautiful um, day outside. Fun fact for you, when you Google Podcraft, you might know this, sometimes like uh, an HP Lovecraft <laughs> yeah. uh, podcast comes up. I've got an HP Lovecraft yeah. t-shirt on today, yeah. so and there's a... There was an old an old show that must have stopped a few years back, eh? HP uh, Podcraft. Yes, indeed. But that's not us. We're not talking about Cthulhu, don't worry. Uh, he's not coming to, uh, to get your microphones. Instead, we're going to help you create something. Uh, which is your first episode. This season is all about creating your first podcast episode. Just taking that first move and getting it out there into the world, eh? Um, just helping people get over that procrastination. So short, sharp episodes helping you take those steps to get it out there. So if you've been listening along, you know, last time around we talked about formats and approaches. So basically how you can put a show together. And now we're going to go into that age old question. What's that thing we're asked the most often, Matthew? <laughs> how long and how often, which is, uh, <laughs> yes. it could be taken in multiple sounds like different a, ways. Sounds like a different show. But yes, how long and how often? <laughs> uh, how long should my podcast be? How often should I podcast? How many times do you get that every day by email? Yeah, it's a question that's asked a lot, <laughs> isn't it? So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's seems to be a sort of commonly repeated uh, stat, if you like, that you should be aiming for an episode of around 20 minutes. Yeah, and yeah. people have actually come up with a lot of data that, like, on the surface backs that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you hear arguments like average commuter times and yes. all this. Yeah, so yeah. the reasons I don't really think that's relevant is, like, well, we're podcast listeners and uh -huh. I listen to podcasts of all different lengths. Yeah, and. Yeah drive up here in the morning, got a podcast on, um, stick my headphones on, walk in. When I start work, I just hit pause. Mm -hmm. And then when I go out for my lunch, I put my headphones back on, I just hit play again. The, the length's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. Totally. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, I've, I've never, if a podcast's good enough from start to finish, I've never thought, oh, this is going on a bit. So yeah, yeah. it's like, I mean, exactly. is, is that the same way you sort of think about it? Yeah, totally. It? I, don't, I don't feel like I need to complete something during one session. Um, and in fact, I, there's so many different contexts as well. Like I think, yeah, that's obviously a good place for people to listen is on a, a commute, like on a way to work or whatever. But um, the whole thing about an average that's taken as well is that nobody's actually, very few people are actually average. Yeah. <laughs> it's by definition a, a kind of, a mean across a huge variation of numbers yeah. um and yeah there's going to be a larger uh, group of people around that center point but it's still going to be a big variation between like 15 and 25 minutes or something there'll be a whole lot of people um and yeah there's all these other contexts as well like cooking my dinner mowing the lawn like just doing some work at the weekend or something like that it's, i'll listen to a podcast so yeah i think that's that's a bad stat. <laughs> um, but like, there is still such a thing as too long, isn't there? Like, what might an example of a podcast that's too long be for you? I I think it's, I mean, it's down to value, isn't it? It's down to how good the show is. It's down to whether people are, the worst thing you can do, I think, is if you make a show half an hour long because your show's always half an hour long and therefore you like add things in because you feel like you need to fill out that space. And this sounds obvious, but I, we so we hear people doing it, don't we? You, see, you listen to podcasts where it should have been only 15 minutes. They could have covered this topic in even 10 minutes, mm -hmm. but for some reason they've done it over a half an hour because they see that as their normal length. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think my general rule is that a podcast should be as short as possible, but no shorter. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so don't cut it to fit a perfect length and don't extend it to fit a perfect length. Make it as short as you can for that topic so that every single minute of that show is packed with, you know, dense uh, value. You know, you're, every mm -hmm. single bit of it is worthwhile. You're not covering over the same stuff. You're not waffling. You're not going off on tangents. It's every single bit of that show is worthwhile to the audience. Then I suppose the other side of things is like, if if you're saying to your listeners we're going to do a half hour show or a 20 minute show mm -hmm. and you're interviewing somebody and it's really good content and you've got a few really good questions still to ask, you think there's a lot of value in there, Yeah, there's no benefit to saying, well, I'm afraid we're out of time. Yes. So if you're really, <laughs> like, if, if, 
if it's necessary for some reason to be doing a specific length of yeah. episode, you could always cut the episode, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and go for another half hour and make that another episode. Yeah. But again, I, I find that these, this is a hangover from TV and radio. You've yes. got the news at the top of the hour, so you <laughs> need to be done. You don't need to be done in podcasting. Um, it, it's up to you. Yeah. You know? It's the power of the medium, is yeah. we have control. There's no rules. You can do whatever the hell, hell you like. So, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think there's actually. <clears throat> you mentioned it's only so it's only too long if you start going off topic or it's or it becomes dull because it's not dense with entertainment or value or whatever it is um but i do think there's a place for really short shows as well that fit mm. into certain contexts like like these days i actually listen to a few separate shows that are only a few minutes long or mm. five minutes long because when i walk into the kitchen and i'm putting on my coffee for example in the morning i quite like the fact that i can't listen to uh, See, here's a, an example of I don't want to listen to a 20 minute show because actually I know my kids are going to come down in 10 minutes time and I don't want to put something on that's just going to have to stop again in five minutes. But there's a few five minute shows out there, news updates, that type of thing, um, which I can just say, Alexa, play this. Mm -hmm. Alexa, play that. And it just comes on quickly. It'll play it for three, four, five minutes while I'm putting my coffee on and it's finished and it's mm -hmm. done by then. So I think there's actually a big place for really short shows nowadays, especially with smart speakers. Yeah, like the the sort of uh, what I'd refer to as thought of the day style shows that yeah. come out more frequently and have just one little thing. Yeah. I, I guess there's an attraction in that when you look at your podcast app and you see this long list of episodes all at like two minutes. So yeah. you, you know what you're yeah. getting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that definitely um, there's that side of the coin too. Yeah. So I yeah. guess it's what what's going to work for you, what's going to serve your topic, what's going to serve your listener, yeah. Yeah. and just do that. Yeah, and the I suppose the final thing I'll mention is around the kind of the long form content concept, whereby you know there are some good shows out there that do do proper long form, like um, Tim Ferriss, the Tim Ferriss Show, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, shows like that that go like two, three hours sometimes, mm -hmm. and they're still really popular. So it's an argument that people will listen to a two or three hour show, and that's true. Like people will listen to a show that's that long, but I'd be wary of starting one that long yeah wouldn't you I, t I tend to find these are people that have built reputations yeah. already yes. if you just came out the gate with that then yeah. you might struggle I think you have to earn it don't you mm -hmm. you have to either by having a pre-existing audience before you start the podcast like Tim Ferriss did or by just showing how good you are at doing this like Dan Carlin like mm -hmm. he's he's been creating these episodes that just his audience, I think, mainly grew just because they were so damn good. Yeah. <laughs> like he tells such a good story over two or three hours. So, yeah, I think there's that's that's the only time I would get into this uh, proper long form content, I would say. Mm -hmm. All right. So is that how long that cover length? Yeah, that's as uh, done our length. Cool. So stick to basically, I would go as short as you can, uh, but no shorter. <laughs> Try and keep it on the shorter end of things. But if you can talk for 30, 40, 50 minutes and it's really good value, then go for it. Um, but even, I mean, there's an argument for splitting up, like even a 40, 50 minute one into 20 minute chunks, say, just to fit you know make it more consumable more snackable but mm -hmm. then again do what you like it's your audience test it test things with your audience see what feedback you get um and then follow that basically follow the people that listen to you right so second half of this uh how long and how often is all about frequency isn't it so uh the probably the second most common thing we're asked how often should i do my podcast yeah i mean the the, the sort of the I don't know if it's the most common actually, yeah, but yeah. you think of weekly as like I do a podcast every week, yeah, and yeah, I think there's yeah. you know there's a lot of value in thinking that way because yeah. a weekly show has something about it where like the weekly shows I listen to whatever day they come out I just I expect that to be you know I expect to be spending a Thursday with a certain podcast. Yes. Um, so that that's really powerful, I think, over a period of time, if you've got that relationship with your listeners. Do you, how many podcasts do you listen to that you actually know what day it comes out? I've got a, even though I'm not remotely into wrestling at all, I listen to a <laughs> wrestling one that comes out on a Thursday. Okay. Um, and I never never miss an episode of that so really? i always know um when i sort of leave the house in the morning i open up overcast and i see it downloading so right. it's like um 
It's interesting because I know people, I know there are people like you, like that, that have their their few favourite shows, say two or three favourite shows where they actually, they look forward to it coming out on a certain day. But I have, I mean, I, I would consider myself a pretty prolific podcast listener, but I have never done that. I've never known when any show comes out. I always mm. just have 20, 30 shows on my feeds. Um, when I walk out the door or when I, you know, whenever I'm doing something, I'll just open it up. I'll see what's there. I'll just press something. I don't wait for it. So it's kind of funny for me that... Um, but nevertheless, if you're listening to that show every week, it's, you're, you're getting that yeah. every week. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, the, the weekly format still fits me because I'll think like I've got a, I've got a start when it's on the Gimlet Media Startup Podcast, for example. That's one of my, the ones I particularly look forward to. Still don't know what day it comes out, but I do think, right, OK, there'll, there'll be a new one this week. I know that the, the new week started, so I, I should be able to find another one in my feed. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely I agree. I mean, there's so much of our lives are built around a weekly schedule, isn't it? That it Mm-hmm. That just fits quite well psychologically. It fits as a creator often. Like if you set every sec, every Tuesday, for example, every Tuesday afternoon, you're going to record your show. So I think it works quite well. On the other hand, uh, I mean, there is a fair bit of work in podcasting. Is weekly too often? Is it sustainable for your average person? It can be, uh, depending on the mm. time that you've got available, depending on the type of podcast you're doing and how much work is involved in doing yeah, it. Yeah. Um, if you're doing a solo show and you only have yourself to rely on, yeah, it's it's more realistic to think, okay, I can hit this weekly schedule. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're doing interviews, if you've got co-hosts or multiple co-hosts, obviously you're at the mercy of other people's schedules as well. Yeah. With a bit of planning, it definitely can work, but understand that, you know, ultimately you don't have full control here and you're going to have to work a bit harder to, to make it work, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess the, the other one, the other option, uh, if you think that weekly might be a bit too much, what would be to go fortnightly or, or bi-weekly, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I mean, I think um, I think that's still often enough. I think, so the argument for going weekly as opposed to fortnightly is that it kind of builds a more powerful habit, I suppose. Maybe you're, you're putting out more content, you're being a bit more prolific, you can grow your audience a bit faster the more frequent you do. Um, but fortnightly, I think, is still pretty regular isn't it i mean mm-hmm. it's still i think that's still often enough and i've seen we've seen fortnightly shows that grow a good audience and it gives you a bit more breathing space as well um and there's also the argument i think as well that you could put as much work into a fortnightly show as a weekly show and just make it more polished mm-hmm. like instead of doing a weekly interview which is just put out raw you put out a fortnightly interview where you actually spend a few hours editing it so it's cut down from a 40 minute to a 20 minute interview, makes it more valuable, more entertaining, more useful because it's more information in less time. Um, put in some music, that kind of thing that just highlights things. So I think there's an argument for that as well. Um, what about The Daily Show? <laughs> the Daily Show, I, d- I don't know if we're seeing as much of those now. Yeah, I know yeah. back when, when John Lee Dumas was doing his, his Daily Show himself yeah. and that's, that's... Even he's stopped now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that obviously spun off a lot of, for lack of a better term, copycat shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, people thought that they needed to do a Daily Show to to do what he was doing, basically. Yes. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that. So, yeah, Daily, unless you'd... Unless your um, other needs are taken care of, if you've got plenty of money in the bank, don't need to work a full time job. Yeah. By all means, do do a daily show. But if you've if you've got a job or run a business or anything like that, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I would I would stay away from that. Yeah, approach. it's a bit tricky. I, to be honest, it's too much content for me. I yeah, I used to I enjoyed John's um, delivery, but I never never listened to Entrepreneur on Fire because I couldn't keep up with it, mm-hmm. and it was just too much. I found as well there was a bit too much repetition just because it was so frequent. It was just, yeah. So I, I don't enjoy listening to daily shows, um, not because of the content, but because of how often it comes out. It makes mm-hmm. me feel uncompletist that I'm not listening to them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, back, like, I ran a weekly show with ADPP for a few years and we even got, like, when we would survey our listeners, some listeners even said that weekly was a bit too much for them. Really? They, they right. found that the episodes started to back up. Oh, really? Maybe it's just it wasn't a, a good enough show at the time that yeah. um, it ever went to the top of people's yes. queues. But, yeah, yeah. Um, aye, so, yeah. 
As, I, I supp- yeah, sorry, I was going to say, I suppose we should say that yeah, it doesn't matter. We're saying this, this is our preference, but I mean, people, the Daily Shows have done very well. But like John, we're mm. talking about John because his show did so well. So tens of thousands of listeners, I think 40, 50,000, I think I remember, um, and his reports at one time. So there people are there are people out there that would consume daily content, don't get us wrong. It's just that it's hard to sustain as a creator. And um, arguably some listeners find it hard to be hard to sustain in listening to it as well so don't necessarily think it's it's a place it's a panacea to creating a, a really high growth podcast i think the, the bottom line for me is like pick something that works for you initially run with it for a while yeah and when once you've got that sort of level of audience check in regularly with them and ask them their opinions yes. and then make changes accordingly yeah yeah from definitely. that Perfect. so yeah okay that's frequency that's how often Right, let's tie it up. So just mentioned the uh, the podcast launch, launch mastermind. I can't say that at all. The podcast <laughs> launch mastermind again, starting on June 20th, 2018. If you're listening beyond that date, we will be running this again. So still pop over and you can see if there's uh, when the next mastermind is coming up. Uh, you can get there at thepodcasthost.com forward slash mastermind. And we'll help you uh, get your first episode out there with uh, a lot more individual coaching and uh, help from your colleagues on the mastermind as well otherwise next time around we are talking uh, what are we talking we're pl- talking planning and scripting and actually there's going to be something in there around um, frequency too which can help you with your frequency which is around seasons as well isn't there that's a big part of our planning process um, so if you're interested in that come back next week for the planning and scripting your episode show <laughs>